All right, we are finally getting some action on these next two packages that are currently on the table. Also, I have some daily updates that I'd like to share with you in this video, so let's get right into it. Welcome everyone, thanks for joining me. If you haven't done so already, make sure to hit the subscribe button right down below the video as it's totally free to do so, and I am back every single day to help you out and to keep you updated in any way that I can. Thank you so much, I truly appreciate each and every one of you, and let's get into this. So let's first start out with talking about how the negotiations are going on these first two packages that are currently on the table right now, the American Jobs Plan, otherwise known as Infrastructure, and the second portion, the American Families Plan, also known as Social Infrastructure or a stimulus package. That is also the package where we are expecting them to add a fourth stimulus check possibly even monthly recurring payments and maybe even a boost to benefits like social security, retirement, disability, SSDI, survivors, SSI, and maybe even VA. Wow, that'd be nice, right? Let's talk through where we currently stand. So remember late last week, we talked about this small bipartisan group of senators who were coming together to work out the first portion of the package, the infrastructure package. Well, they came together and they've been negotiating and surprisingly, things are actually going pretty well. Yeah, I know, you're surprised, right? <laughs> I am too. So anyway, as of today, we now officially have 11 more senators who have joined the group. Whoa, yes. So now the group consists of 21 senators. In fact, the group is made up of 11 Republicans, 9 Democrats, and 1 uh, Independent to make up the entire 21 group. So they've also brought in a couple members from the House of Representatives, the Problem Solvers Caucus. Yeah, it's getting real, right? Yes, it is getting real. So the chief of staff, like the administration chief of staff, has also told President Biden, because he's out of town right now over in Europe, uh, he told the president that, it's, that things are actually looking pretty good and that there could be some room here for some deals or negotiations. So things are actually looking pretty good. Now, again, when President Biden gets back into town and starts you know, looking through this whole thing and has a chance to examine everything and see what this whole package entails, well... At that point, we'll have a better glimpse into if we can actually come together on a bipartisan deal. Remember, we've said this before, we want them to come together as quickly as possible to get this first package done, get it out of our way, so we can focus on the second portion of the package, the American Families Plan, so we can focus on the fourth stimulus check, so they can add it in there, and we can all start looking at it and observing it and being really happy that it's in there, you know what I mean? So that is when we expect the fourth stimulus check to make his debut into the world and be introduced and born little baby fourth stimulus check. Well, hopefully he's not that little, right? Hopefully he pops out as a huge baby called like $2,000 or something. I don't really know, but hopefully he's a big one. He's a whopper. I don't know. What do you call big babies? It just sounds bad. But anyway, yes, hopefully stimulus check number four is a nice, big, juicy one. So at the same time, Chuck Schumer, the leader in the Senate on the Democratic side, has also started the budget resolution process. Yes, this officially started today. So now remember... This is the first portion or the first step in moving forward with the budget reconciliation process. It's a very slow process, even though they say this is the way that they fast track things. Well, yeah, it's a fast track, but it's still a very slow track. So here's the thing. He started the budget resolution process. Now, this process will continue, and then he's getting everything set up for budget reconciliation. So that is likely what is going to be the American Families Plan. So basically, Chuck Schumer said, we're taking these things down two separate paths, one for a bipartisan deal and the other one for budget reconciliation. And uh, yeah, so it's just a matter of time until all this stuff gets hammered out. Here's the thing. It's not really a matter of if these packages are going to be passed. They're probably going to be passed almost 100%. Of course, we can't say 100% because almost nothing is 100%. But we can say with a very high likelihood and probability that these packages will actually be passed. It's just a matter of time until they actually do it. Yeah, I know. It's taken longer than we anticipated and longer than we hoped, but 
this is just kind of what we have to work with. There's not a whole lot we can do to expedite the process. We just gotta take it one day at a time and continue to go through with all this. So it's nice that they're actually coming together and you know possibly working together for once. I don't know, but yes, it's nice that they're actually doing something here. At the same time, the Fed and the Treasury, the Secretary Treasury and many other people out there continue to say that inflation is going to continue running wild through the rest of the year and, believe it or not, throughout all of next year as well. So yes, great. I don't know about all you, but uh, are you excited to hit the grocery store and pay even more for your favorite cereal? Maybe even more for a gallon of milk? You know, all the stuff that we buy on a, ba on a daily basis, a loaf of bread, you know, coffee, whatever it is that you buy. Oh man, I just can't wait to hit the grocery store and pay more. Ha, ah, one of my favorite things to do, paying more for the same stuff. Yes, I love it. Ah, I'm being sarcastic, by the way. I don't love paying more. In fact, <laughs> my favorite price is free. Yeah, so, um, yeah, that's my favorite price. Free, free, free is fr uh, my favorite price. Anyway, so yes, inflation will continue to run wild for a long time now. So we've seen a lot of um, increasing prices. In fact, uh, inflation is going anywhere between po uh, like six tenths of a percent and eight tenths of a percent month over month, every single month going forward. So yeah, it is going pretty hot right now at the same time. So very interesting. We definitely have to keep an eye on this as well because remember, we've said this before too, but inflation, when it continues to move higher like this and continues to run wild, who is it really hurting the most? Yeah, you called it the fixed income individuals, the people who are living on the same fixed income month over month from maybe like social security, SSDI, survivors, um, retirement, SSI, VA, maybe people that are living on a pension. Yes, everybody is being you know, impacted the most when you have your a fixed income, you have a budget for your money, right? And all of a sudden prices continue to go up. So where are you gonna cut? Well, unfortunately, it's probably going to be like groceries, things like this, because you still need to pay your rent, you still need to pay your utilities, you know what I mean? You still gotta pay all that stuff, but where's the one place where you could be a little bit flexible? Probably with groceries. Well, that's not very fun, cutting your groceries down, not being able to have enough food on the table each and every month, <sighs> yeah. Not good. So one more thing I wanna hit on, well, a couple more things I wanna hit on too. At the end of this month, so less than two weeks from now, the CDC eviction moratorium is set to expire. As of right now, we have not heard a single word out of the presidency talking about extending it through executive order. Yes, he can do that. He can extend it through executive order in last the fact, um, sorry, in fact, the last time it was extended was through executive order. Uh, when was that? The, the end of, when was it even? The end of March, I think? Yeah, it was the end of March he did it last. So yes, it could be done with executive order, but as of right now, there is no mention of that actually happening. Usually, typically, they wait till like the very last minute, the last couple of days before it's about to expire, and then they issue an executive order. If not, we'd be looking at millions upon millions of people. In fact, the last number I just saw a few minutes ago was about 4 million people who could potentially be evicted as of July 1st if it's not extended. That's a ton of people, especially when they're talking about right now a homeless crisis in this country, especially in California. And then we're gonna throw out four million more people? Does that make any sense? Anybody, please, does that, does that make any sense? No, doesn't make any sense, not to me anyway. So, wow, another big issue that we have on the table right now that seems to be kind of, you know, not really being examined. I don't know. There's just, it seems like there's so many things going on right now and it just continues to be overlooked. I don't know. It just, I don't like it. It's just like, let's focus on one thing at a time. Let's get these things hammered out. Let's get some things done here. Let's look out for the people who are still struggling during this time. Yeah. So very interesting. One more thing I want to say, <laughs> this is kind of funny. Um, so today president Biden met with uh, Vladimir Putin out of Russia. Well, after their meeting, President Biden was talking with the press, talking, you know, about the whole meeting and things like this. And uh, um, there, it was addressed that Russia continues to offer or con continues to do these uh, cyber hacks. So like the Colonial Pipeline over on the East Coast um, and the meat processor just a couple weeks ago. And there's all these different uh, cyber attacks that are going on right now. Well, apparently Biden talked to Putin about it and... Uh, <laughs> After the meeting, one of the reporters or somebody asked uh, Biden about it, and President Biden said, well, I told Putin 
uh, that he apparently Biden gave Putin a list of 16 entities that he's not allowed to attack. <laughs> so in other words, he's basically telling Putin, hey, go for it. It's a free for all. But here's a list of 16 entities that you're not allowed to attack. Um, I don't know. I mean, are we playing like Battleship or something? I mean, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, I think it's kind of funny that he gave him a list saying, you know, essentially saying have at it, but don't attack these 16. I don't know. It, I guess it's just not really my, my strategy. I wouldn't have given a list. I'd say, hey, hands off. Don't touch us. Stay away. You know what I mean? But uh, <laughs> I don't know. That is kind of funny. But um, anyway, so I just want to give you this quick update with everything going on right now. I hope you're doing well right now during this time. Again, another heat wave rolling across the country. So I hope you're staying safe out there. Stay cool with everything going on. And I will continue to keep you updated right now. I know it's a slow grind with everything going on with these negotiations. I know it's kind of boring. I get it. But we got to get through all this in order to get to the next package, the American Families Plan and the fourth stimulus check. It's just we got to go through one thing at a time here. And I know we just got to work our way through this. So I will continue to keep you updated. Thanks again, everybody. You're awesome. Make sure to hit the subscribe button if you haven't done so already. And go back and check out any of my other videos right here on the channel. And thank you so much. I truly